Aaron Winkle in the line and Aye. Airbridge collapsing. <laughs> There's, oh, the sponsor! Oh, the sponsor! Kevin Crawford! The KNC Groundworks Scottish Rally Championship stayed on the tarmac for round four of the 2023 season, swapping the fast and flat roads of the Scottish borders for the tight, twisty and narrow roads of Argyll for the Danoon Presents Argyll Rally. All the big players from the opening three rounds were in attendance, lined up behind David Henderson and Chris Lee's Rally 2 Fiesta. Yeah, okay. It's obviously it's a lot harder rally, I think, in the wet, and it looks like it'll be wet tonight and changeable tomorrow. So, I think that'll bring about its own challenges. So, I'll likely see a bit of attrition, and hopefully, we're not part of it. We've had the opportunity to get a recce on this one, and we've made the most of it. So, just keen to get started. Hopefully, make a make a bit of a mark overnight, and just push on from there tomorrow. That's the plan. Ah, not too bad. Um, I'm looking forward to getting back on the gravel again. So, it'll just be a case of getting through this one and getting some points on the board, but first time here so I'm quite looking forward to it the stages look quite tricky and fast so yeah we'll see how it goes tonight How are you feeling about the impreza on these roads? Uh, I've had a run out in it and I could get too critical if you kind of know your car and you know it better and better whether if you just jumped in like I was in a higher car here two years ago and you're like oh this feels okay but you know you, you improved as the rally went on and I had a good result the last time so fingers crossed we'll be at the races Yeah, Got quite a good chance we had a really good wreck yesterday um, the new one in particular is really good, really, really fast. Um, the weather is going to be the the big deciding factor, I think. But um, but with it being a bit wetter, perhaps the power um, disadvantage we've got won't be such a big issue. So yeah, I'm hoping we'll, we'll be fighting at the front. It's one of those ones you just have to wait and see what happens. To be quite honest with you, um, not doing anything daft. We just need a solid result after the clock. Uh, just need to get some decent points on the board. That's that's the main objective. Yeah, we're running the same as what we did at the Jim Clark um, and it seemed to work well over there so um, we're hoping it'll suit the bumps and jumps of this rally because it's obviously a lot a lot bumpier than what it was at the Jim Clark so fingers crossed it works and but we'll have to feel our way into the wet like everybody will um, some of the tarmac guys will know what they're doing but us gravel boys have got no clue <laughs> so. Six stages made up the Friday night starting with the now traditional blast through the noon town centre the rain falling solidly The difficult conditions were going to cause drama. Speyside winners Finlay Retson and Paul Beaton were the first to fall victim. A stream of water running across the road in stage six, grabbing the front of the Fiesta and speeding them into a telegraph pole. Leading after the noon, Hugh Brunton and Drew Sturrock would roll out of the event on the same stage after clipping a wall. Both were sore, but thankfully not seriously hurt. John Stone and Laura Connell had an accident on the same stage. Laura taken to hospital for checkups, but thankfully wasn't hurt too badly beyond heavy bruising. That caused the stage to be cancelled and the vast majority of crews were given notional times. <laughs> Topping the survivors, Henderson and Lees beat the bogey time in three by seven seconds. They then survived a big moment in stage five and despite feeling they were too cautious, they took a four second lead to bed with them. Second overnight, Rory Young and Alan Cathers were making their second start of the season. The Citroen pilot not feeling he was brave enough for these stages, but the times were good. Mark McCulloch and Michael Hendry were 11 seconds further back. They had adjusted the rear suspension setup after stage three and were happy with the car on the subsequent stages. 
Michael Binney and Clear Mole were nine seconds down on the Proton. Michael unimpressed with his performance, but the times were fairly competitive. The Evo ending the night just three seconds clear of Willie Patterson and Tom Hind. The Fabia crew continuing to get faster with each event in the car. Well, the best from Long Island, New York. Oh, 22, built with Patterson and uh, Tom Hind. Another Skoda. <laughs> Experiencing wet tarmac properly for the first time in the I-20, John Wink and Neil Shanks had decided on a fast but safe run over the Friday stages. 13 seconds behind the Fabia, they had only two seconds over the Evo 10 of Wayne Sisson and Peridor Davies overnight. See, they're having a little look across it. Well, now. There was only four seconds to the battle for top two-wheel drive. Archie Swinscoe and Jane Nicholl were continuing from where they left off on the Jim Clark, using their experience of Mull to good effect. The Adam five seconds up on Gordon Morrison and Ian Parker's Mark II Escort. Montana and Parker were more concerned about keeping ahead of 10th than chasing the Adam. Barry Groundwater and Ashley Will were only one second behind the Escort in their WRC Impreza. The battle for bragging rights was going to be intense on day two. Yeah, last night was okay, a uh, little cautious on the on the long one, but I was one of the few to get a run through there, so it was okay. Good, and you enjoying it? I don't know if I enjoyed last night too much. It seemed a bit chancy in a few different places, but it's all right. We are where we are. I find the stages here really difficult. It's a really fine line between if you don't push, you're nowhere in the times. You're not competitive, but if you just push that a little bit too much, it's a really fine line here. You can have some pretty big moments. So I think we're maybe getting a little closer to that line now. So, but it's yeah, it rewards the brave, and I haven't taken my brave pills yet. So, but no, it was a good night. We, we struggled across the first stage, uh, the first main stage. I've got going well in the second, so we're hoping it'll continue like that today. Good, uh, it's a better day of weather, I think, today. Yeah, it's looking, I think there might be rain for this first loop, but I think it's to dry up after that. Um, but to be fair, the rain was quite good fun. Uh, you never know if you're on the limit or you're going to put it off the road, but we just keep trying. <laughs> it was a uh, bloody slow start for me, to be fair. I just, I had no confidence at all for some reason, so uh, I needed to pull my finger out a wee bit. So we had a decent run through the short stage. Um, and the new stage went, I felt like it went terribly, but the time wasn't actually too bad. So, um, and then obviously we, we came on John Stone's accident uh, on the 14 miler. So that was, that was the, the night, the night over for us. So, um, a fine start, but I feel like there's still plenty left in the bag. So, yeah. Day two dawned still damp, but with a promise of drying up. Four stages would make up the opening loop. And the drama would continue. Henderson and Lees running wide on a right-hander and damaging their rear suspension, forcing them to retire. <laughs> Young and Cathers inherited the lead. The Citroen crew still feeling they were getting to grips with the car on these tricky stages. They were now 16 seconds up on McCulloch and Hendry. The Proton team fastest SRC crew in stages 8 and 9. <laughs> 40 seconds back, Binny and Mole were keeping things safe in third. The Mitsubishi now 48 seconds clear of Wink and Shanks. The I-20 crew changed the setup overnight after some advice from Matt Edwards and were much more confident. And go, left on press, to pass, four right, don't. Opens five, match, go. Six left, match, don't, big rock. 80, to five left, okay, over small bump, 100. Fast five right, on crest, line. 80, to long five left, max. Go on, go on, go on, go on, pass the second, lay by. This one's okay, 150. Go on, pass the lay by. Six right, max, over the bump, okay, 60. Fast five left, only 60. Fast three right, damn. Fast three right, damn. 
goes 60 against Lloyd for left narrows only 30 is chicane left entry three bales Patterson and Hind were still fifth, Willie feeling that having two spears on the opening loop was upsetting the balance of the car in Glen de Rule. But the rest of the loop was solid and the Fabia was just one second up on Sisson and Davies Evo with four stages left. Left four, right three over crest. And left one over bump, 50. Left one into right five. Grid, quick left two in. Into right one, crest. Long left three. Into left over crest. Crest, left one over bump. Into right two in over crest. Left two, right one. Caution crest, left six. 49th overall after a difficult final stage on Friday night, Jock Armstrong and Hannah McKillop were motoring on Saturday morning. The Impreza are now just 11 seconds down on the Evo. Swinsco and Nicol continued to lead the two-wheel drives despite a heavy landing in Loch Fine. The Adam now just four seconds ahead of Angus Laurie and Paul Gribben. Still learning the tarmac game, Angus and Paul were getting quicker with each stage. And eight seconds back, ALM teammates John Rintoul and Ross Hind were also speeding up in the daylight. The mini crew planning a setup and tyre compound change for the final loop. Good, good, yeah, yeah, it's a uh, typical Argyle, it's uh, been very wet, very challenging stages, but it's good, no, it's good, we're starting to get the grip of the car a bit more now, a bit more confident, so yeah, I think there's a bit more time this afternoon, so we'll see what we can do. Yeah, it's been a good morning, um, tricky, tricky out there, very, uh, this morning, the first few stages were quite wet, and but we got away with it, we've had one massive, massive moment, even Michael let out a yelp and he never does, so it must have been a big one. But we come away and we're fine. Yeah, is it in car? <laughs> uh, probably, it'll probably look like nothing in the in car. It was more the speed we were at at the time, but we just landed on the grass. It's so probably, I don't know, 80, 90 miles an hour. It's quick enough. We'll try not to do that this afternoon. Yeah. It's just going steady away for us here. We're um, middle of the road and um, just not doing anything too daft, really. We've just kind of let hopefully all the carnage happen and um, just playing the long game a wee bit. and. We're there or thereabouts, so it's good. It's going better this morning now. For um, I just yeah, just generally happier with the car. We made some setting changes this morning on the advice of Matt Edwards, so it's maybe all in my head, but it's felt better. And the times are a wee bit better, so um, and the most important thing is we're both feeling more comfortable in the car. It was a wee bit nervous feeling last night, so um, yeah, we're getting on fine. Jordan Anderson and Harry Stubbs backed up their excellent run on the Jim Clark with another good drive in Argyle. The Impreza taking the win in both the Albin Garage Challengers and Groundwater Lift Trucks Subaru Cup. David Hardy took the top auto shop two wheel drive drivers honours in his Mark II Escort, finally turning his luck around after a very difficult start to the season. Ashley Morris had Steve Harris alongside for the first time in the SRC, the Fiesta R200 pilot producing her best Scottish performance so far, taking the ladies' win along with 43rd overall. Megan O'Kane was back in her Fiesta and she enjoyed a titanic battle for top lady with Ashley Morris, finishing just behind the R200. She did have the compensation of taking her first Moats Offshore Junior win of the season. And for a more detailed look at the categories and classes, check back for our other reviews coming soon.
The final loop was a repeat of Saturday's opening loop, and the drama wasn't over yet. Swinscoe and Nickel were the first to hit trouble. A bad landing putting the car into a spin and unfortunately bouncing it off a bank. The two wheel drive leaders retiring on the spot with front end damage. Patterson and Hind were also a victim of the same jump. The Fabia surviving the spin but further into the loop they would slip off the road into retirement. Yeah, so 14th overall but sporting body damage and we don't know where that's happened. Rintoul and Hines good run continued, the mini crew making up for their early Jim Clark retirement with a solid 10th in the SRC. The battle for bragging rights between Montana and Groundwater had continued all event. Morrison and Parker eventually losing out to Groundwater and Will by just one second at the finish. Ian getting the consolation of top two-wheel drive navigator's points. Laurie and Gribbon climbed up to seventh at the finish. Angus excited to get back on the gravel next time out. Sisson and Davies weren't quite able to keep Armstrong and McKillop back over the final loop, the Evo ending up just four seconds down on the Impreza at the finish. Fifth in the SRC was a good salvage job for Jock and Hannah after being 49th overnight. This result enough for them to maintain the championship points lead. Wink and Shanks continued their strong season with fourth, an excellent result considering John's lack of tarmac experience. Third for Benny and Mole was a good way to bounce back after retiring on the Jim Clark. Michael hopeful to be back out in John Forrest's Fiesta R5 for the Scottish next time out. Chuffed the bits with that. We needed a good haul of points uh, after the non-finish at the clock and uh, we just came in with a sensible uh, heads on and uh, did exactly what we wanted to do, so chuffed the bits. Good. Claire, how was it for you? Yeah, all right, yeah. Um, I wheeled him in a wee bit on one stage today. I just thought, hang on a minute, we need to play the game here and yeah, he was driving really, really well, but there's no point risking it, so, and we had enough buff of buffer either side, so yeah, we just wheeled it in a wee bit. Good, excellent. What's next? Uh, the Scottish is next, so hopefully we'll be back out in the uh, in the in the beast little fiesta. So um, looking forward to that. It's getting changed back onto gravel next week, so that's the next outing for us. Over a minute ahead of the Evo at the finish, Argyle was an excellent result for McCullough and Hendry. Mark absolutely delighted that the hard work on the home engineered car is beginning to pay off on every event. Chuffed a bit, chuffed a bit for this result. Ro Rory's had an absolute blinding weekend, he's, he's been fast in every stage so we couldn't quite work with him in the end so I'm more than happy to come home a second. Yeah, good, because there was a lot of carnage out there this weekend, wasn't there? There certainly was, and we've had a few moments ourselves, but we've got away with them all, luckily. So, uh, pleased, really pleased, and uh, nice to get some points for the championship. Okay, Michael, how was it from your side of the car? Uh, really good, enjoyable event. The stages are good. Uh, Mark drove really well the whole weekend, so can't complain. The, the sun's came out nice, so it's made the afternoon good. Good, good. And what's next? Uh, it'll be the Scottish rally next, so it's sounding quite different for 
for everyone this year, new stages and things like that. So now that we've got the car sorted and tarmac, we'll have to try and get it working on gravel again. <laughs> 27 seconds up the road at the finish. It was a big day for Young and Cathers. Amazingly, this was their first SRC win after 17 years of supporting the championship. Yeah, we're thrilled, absolutely thrilled. I think that's probably the first time we've won an SRC round, so it's only taken us 17 years, but anyway, we got there in the end, so no, it's been great. A real challenge of weekend, but the Argyle's always like that, so we got there in the end, and yeah, we've had a really good really good day today. Yeah, good, excellent. Alan, how's it been from your side? Oh, it's been pretty uh, tough, really. Um, last night, you know, the notes and the, the wet weather and that, and we got it sorted in the end and got through, and then today we were a bit of a shaky start because you couldn't get the balance right uh, on the, on the notes but then we pushed on in this second sector and uh, everything went well apart from the odd chicane that was tight <laughs> but we don't talk about that do we no we don't we don't <laughs> no it was good yeah good what's next um We'll try and do the Grampian if work commitments allow and we'll definitely do the Galloway Hills so um, hope to do hopefully another two rounds. So Young's success makes it four different drivers winners in four rounds. Up next, the RSAC Scottish Rally in July.